Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. Let's jump right on in. But before we do, thank you for your support. We greatly appreciate it as you keep helping our channel grow. Let's jump on in. (laughs) The Caitlin Clark effect is in full effect. It still is in full effect, and it will be in full effect for the duration of these Olympics as she's on vacation, relaxing, resting, and coming back in the second half of the season to blow people away, while the United States team can't draw flies to shit. Let's keep it a buck here. We said Caitlin Clark is the needle mover. Caitlin Clark is the straw that stirs the drink. Caitlin Clark is the person who's going to make people watch the U.S. play in the Olympics. And through one game, we have already seen proof of this. You had, on day one for women's basketball, Spain versus China drew 27,021 people. And Puerto Rico drew, against Serbia, drew 15,324. The next day, day two... Nigeria versus Australia drew 24,023 people. Germany versus Belgium drew 20,211. France versus Canada drew 20,211. And the U.S. women's basketball team drew an embarrassing 13,040 people. I've seen some podcasts where they're talking about what time the games were at or whatever. But the U.S. game versus um, Japan was played at 3 p.m. Eastern time, which right now would make it, so right now it's 12.43, six hours. So that would have been a 9 p.m. start time. Do not tell me that at 9 p.m., which is basically prime time, you're going to have only 13,000 people show up when you'd have 27,000 show up at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, it's still a work day, even in France. (laughs) I mean, I don't know. And I've heard excuses about, oh, some of these countries are closer than the U.S. The U.S. men's basketball team drew over 27,000 people versus Serbia. So you tell me. You tell me. Sure, the U.S. won as expected. They won by 26. Great job. But when you saw the beginning of that game and you can look in the stands and you see how empty that building was, it's exactly what I said would happen. It's exactly what I said would happen. I'm not trying to play the role of profit, but the reality is the U.S. Olympic Committee blew it. They blew it and they blew it huge. And the WNBA should be completely pissed off at this situation. Because this is an opportunity to grow their league. And they keep saying it doesn't matter. You know, it matters. International attention and international eyes matters to the growth of the WNBA. The same way it mattered in 1992 when the U.S. Dream Team competed against the rest of the world and embarrassed everybody. It changed the scope and the trajectory of basketball to what it is as we know today. If you look at it right now, 32 years later. Look at the league. Look at who's in it. Look at the drafts on a year-to-year basis. The drafts are primarily international drafts now. You see more international players taken in the first 10 picks than you see American college players. Why is that? Because these guys have been playing professionally since they were like 15 in Europe. 16, 17, they've been playing professionally. Are they more prepared? I don't know. Are they are they better? Some cases yes, some cases no. But the point is, is that they, because of 1992, it changed the trajectory of the NBA to what it is today as we know it. A league that has at least 100 players who are not from the U.S. I'm throwing out an estimate because I know there's a lot. And what do we have in the U.S. in the U.S. right now for the WNBA? We have a league that's primarily American, primarily American, 
the U.S. women's national team, the, the team that's supposed to be the most competitive to them, Belgium, got molly by Germany. Um, you know, and the U.S. just beat Germany by 27 in a friendly, I guess, the friendly practice game before that. I mean, could it be different in the Olympic Games? I mean, it's possible. But this team isn't going to have any real competition. So what exactly would make you watch this team? You would watch it because of Caitlin Clark. And then, yeah, you know who you know who had 13 assists? Chelsea Gray. Imagine. I, I imagine Caitlin Clark could have done the same thing. I imagine she could have done the same thing. But the viewers, the eyes, people watching it, people's people's dollars tell you the story. I don't know what the TV ratings are for the women's band because I didn't watch the game. I didn't see it. I think it was in the afternoon here uh, in, in the U.S. I didn't see it. I'm being completely transparent. But a 9 p.m. start, and you have 13,000 people. These folks have told you with their dollars that they have no interest in seeing the U.S. women's national team without Caitlin Clark. You don't believe me? There's the numbers. Like, data is a thing, and people keep refuting data. People keep refuting facts. I see Puerto Rico versus Serbia with 15,000. Still more than the U.S., Drew. I couldn't tell you who plays for Puerto Rico. I couldn't tell you who plays for Serbia. I have no idea. I mean, France wasn't even the one that drew the most. The most was drawn by Spain versus China. But I don't care about what time the game is at. This is the Olympics. This is the Olympics. It doesn't matter when you're there, what time the games take place at. But this is the Caitlin Clark effect, and Dawn Staley can make her little vi- and have her commentary where she says, "Yeah, we would have reconsidered. You know, we would have had to think about it because she's playing head and shoulders better than everybody else." Yeah, she is. And yeah, she was the reason people were watching two months ago, and she's the reason people were watching today. And you just found out why people decided to not watch and why people decided to not go because Caitlin Clark wasn't there. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think of this attendance? Is this just a uh, an aberration, I guess, a uh, mirage or whatever. Uh, I don't think so. But what are, you, what are your thoughts? Leave a comment. Love to hear from what you think. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and ring that bell. Come on now.